I really don't think I'm explaining it that's right. <laughs> Welcome back! And if you're new here, hi, my name is Daniela and I like talking about books. So if you like listening about them, you're in the right place. Um, today I want to talk about annotating and how you do it, why you do it, and just show you my way of doing it. I'm still a beginner, so I'm still figuring things out, but I don't know, you might get something from it. So let's get into it. The first things first is why would you annotate? I used to be someone who thought that writing in books was a sacrilege, that books should be kept nice and pristine and no corner should be bent, that you should use a bookmark and all of those, but that's just ridiculous. At one point you grow up to realize that it's a book, you know, and I find so much more pleasure in just leafing through a book and seeing my thoughts written there instead of just reading a book, leaving it exactly as it is and just putting it back and then when you come back to it, it's like, did I read it? Like, what did I feel when I read this, you know? So I started writing in them and it's been so much fun. Again, I want to put this as a disclaimer. Do this if you own the books. <laughs> I, that's obvious, but it might not be for some people. Like, if it's a library book, if it's a borrowed book, if, if it's not yours, don't write in it. But as long as the book is yours, you can do whatever you want with it. It's yours. That's why I started writing in them. And it's honestly such a fun thing to do. You, you get to read your thoughts, you get to come back to books, you get to I don't know, understand yourself better, but also the book. And there are multiple books that you can annotate. There are classics, which are more heavy and packed with information. And sometimes you just need to remind yourself who these characters are or put like a tag at the end of the chapter and just kind of write what happened so you don't forget and you're still in the book. Um, but there are also like, Small books, books that you'd read in one sitting and books that provoke any kind of emotion, you know, you want to keep that. And that's why I think that annotating is such a great thing because, you know, it's your thoughts and you don't necessarily want to forget about them. And I'm not saying they're all like thoughts you want to remember or like they're intellectual thoughts that you might leave to your children and all that nonsense. No, some thoughts in the books that I annotate are just like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened or ah, or like, they're really stupid. So every time I reread the book, sometimes I just go for the annotated part. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get that. And I love that for me. So I don't know, it's just, it's so much fun. I promise it's so much fun. Take that from someone who used to be extremely scared of writing in books like I give you permission to write in your own books if that's what you need it's, it's so much fun just so much fun I don't really know how to do this in an order that would make sense so let me just bring you through my process so let's say I have a book I usually take them with me this is my bag and in my bag I don't I don't like leaving the book as it is so I keep it in a little, oh, I keep it in a little book pouch. And um, this one I sewed myself. It has a cute little button as well. Um, I even lined it, so maybe I'll make a video about it one day. Uh, but it's a really easy thing to sew. And in here, usually, I think this pen flew from this. Um, I have a little pencil. This is my mechanical pencil. Um, I prefer mechanicals because with a regular pencil, you have to hassle and sharpen it and it's just, it's a lot of work. With a mechanic one, you just fill it in once in a while and it does the job. It's always sharp and it's just, it's the better choice for me. And then I typically carry around two or one book, but I usually go for two. So if I'm not in the mood for one, I read the other. Um, so this is how I keep them. 
whenever I read, I have my pencil handy with me and I just underline every single sentence that just makes me feel any kind of way. Like it really doesn't matter what kind of way. As long as it makes you feel an emotion, write that down. Like underline it, write something, do anything you want just to keep the memory, you know? Let me start with supplies because I'm all over the place here. So the first thing you need, and I'd say the only thing really, if you don't want to go overboard with it, is a pencil. Some people use a pen, I'm not that daring yet but a pencil. Again, this is a mechanical one, my preferred choice. Um, it, this eraser does absolutely nothing. It's the worst eraser in the world, uh, but the pencil is really good. So you need a pencil. Uh, and then I use sticky notes. So tabs or whatever you like to call them. They come in all different, no, I'm holding these wrong. They come in all different colors. And I know some people like, um, take the book cover and they're like oh so this book has this 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 and this color so I want to pick the book like the tabs that match them and they have multiple sets and they kind of mix and match them um, but I, I don't really do that so this one for example is very gray and blue and just not very coordinated with the cover. I did say that I would try one day to do that, but I'm just like, again, I'm new. I'm discovering what I like, what I don't like. There are a lot of things people do that necessarily don't fit with me. So I don't do them and that's fine. You know, it's a personal choice. So if it doesn't fit for you, don't do it. And that's fine. Um, so this is lessons in chemistry. I went heavy on this book, like heavy with the annotations and a big part of why I read this book so fast is because I had so much fun annotating it. Like, I had a blast. Um, let me show you my tabs. So, I put them in category, and as you can see, they're like, I have character names, quotes I like, um, then 6.30 aka the dog. Um, romance, funny, plot, and I made a special little tab with AMAB for all men are bastards because in this book, oh my god, it's filled with men that you are just going to absolutely hate, like hate. And I ran out of those colors, like that color of tabs, so I had to take another one. Like I had two sets that were the same color, so I had to use them again. Like. That was my most used tab and I was just like, what? Um, but yeah, it's really, it, I had such a fun time and they don't have to make sense again. They have to make sense to you. So here I have idiot written down. Do you see my comment? Idiot, that's it. Um, Cause that was my thought. Like sometimes I wouldn't write anything. I just underline it and that would be fine like I would understand it because the sticky note is I think this is the color for funny things so it just made sense for me and it's just so funny just going back to them and I don't know I had a blast but then when it comes to annotating I also had books that I underlined some things but I didn't really go heavy with the annotating or the putting the tabs like in this book, I didn't put any tabs, but I still underlined some of the things because I love this book, like Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Loved it. I thought it was such a great book, but I was so caught up in this book that I just didn't take the time to annotate because I felt like that would take me out of the story. So I made the informed decision to just not do it. Just, just stay in the book instead of let me grab a pencil, let me grab my tabs, let me underline this, let me write this down. Like that would have taken me out of the story. So I chose not to. And if I were to read this again, I would 100% annotate it because now I know the story. Now I know what happens. Now I'm prepared for the emotions that this book wants to bestow upon me. So I feel like I can take myself out of the story. But when I read it, that was not the case. So it's completely fine to 
ignore, like annotating. Um, I still have some sentences I underline and sometimes I underline parts and then I go back, as you can see here, and then I go back and tab the book, like put the tabs in, because sometimes I don't want to carry tabs with me. Like, I just don't want to do that, so I don't. And that's okay. And there are also like books like this one. I started with one color and then I continued with the other because I ran out of blue, co blue colors. And this was when I was still like beginning to annotate books and tabs didn't mean anything. I just wanted to put them in parts where I underlined something and I just wanted to make it easy for myself to look it up. So like in this one, like this color, it means nothing, but I wanted to be able to go to that part faster. So like this whole annotating thing, it takes time. There are so many videos on the internet and so many of them are amazing about how to annotate, but you have to start doing it yourself. You have to start like seeing what works, what doesn't, what feels right for you. Like no one can say like if you want to annotate, if you want to take yourself out of the story and just write it down or if you, I don't know, if you don't like it at all, if you don't want to write in your books, that's fine. Like it's entirely up to you. I also have books like Red, White and Royal Blue by uh, Casey McQuinston, where I annotated like crazy. I love this book so much, but I had such a fun time underlining it, like such a fun time. And I underlined so many things, but I didn't put the tabs in, you know, like it didn't take me out of the story. The underline, like one of my comments is like, ah, I'm hyperventilating. So. The comments don't have to be smart. If if they had to be, I wouldn't be doing this because there are some comments that I wrote here that I can't even write because they're not PG friendly. But um, like one of them is, ah, so, you know, take it as you'd like. Here we have the way I am blushing. So not the smartest comments, but I had so much fun underlining them. Like, so much fun and maybe one day I will go through this and just put tabs everywhere that I annotated but I don't know I don't know if I will we'll see also at the beginning when I started annotating I started doing it at the top of the books because I thought that when I put them in my bookshelf this wouldn't hit the bookshelf like it'll be perfectly fine but I soon realized, especially with thicker books, that there are a lot of tabs that kind of add up and they're just very messy. Also, there are pages in which I wanted to underline multiple things. So like I wanted to put two tabs in a page and I wanted this tab to be for this sentence and this tab for this one. So I have started doing them on the side and besides being far more aesthetically pleasing and also when I put it on my bookshelf it looks normal but it's like kind of a little secret for myself. Um, I just feel like putting them on the side is so much more convenient and when I'm going to read for example War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy I will definitely put them on the side because there's so much information and so many tabs that I would have to use that it just wouldn't make sense for me to go at the top because you know there are different parts I want to an annotate. Other supplies I want to mention when it comes to annotating that I don't necessarily use as of now but I will try to incorporate them into my annotation are first of all transparent sticky notes so when you have a page let me show you this to you so you have like this is a page right and you don't want to write in your books because that's just not your thing there are transparent sticky notes that you kind of you can read through but it, it doesn't write on the book it's just like a transparent sticky note so you can easily remove them and your book is still in a pristine condition. 
Um, another thing that I want to use are highlighters. These were given by my friend, thank you. Look how cute these are. And I've used them already, but I keep them in the box because they're so cute in the box. But I've seen a lot of people use highlighters for parts in the book that they really like. And I haven't been daring enough to use them because I'm like, oh my God, highlighters in a book? Because a pencil, you can easily like erase. But highlighters, that thing is in there. And realistically, like, this is my book. It's not going away. I'm not donating them. I'm not, like, I know I'm going to keep them because I'm very much a hoarder when it comes to books. So I do want to try just highlighting parts that I like and be more daring with my annotation and my thoughts when it comes to putting them on paper. So that is something I want to add to my annotating journey and see how that works. That was my annotating journey and I hope I gave you some examples of how to do it or just ideas. I don't know. I feel like this was a very chaotic video, like not much made sense, but I'm still very new at the annotating thing. I think I started last year to annotate them. Um, and I just, I'm still learning as well. So once I kind of develop my annotating skills, I will definitely do an annotating revision, if you will, um, just, just to see how my progress went. And yeah, I mean, so far I'm having so much fun annotating. And there are also books that I don't annotate. Like there are books where I don't want to remember anything from them or like, none of the words just jump out to me and those i don't like it's not an obligation if you feel like annotating it do it if you don't just read the book just enjoy it as it is like there is no obligation whatsoever but um i would highly recommend it for like books you want to remember your thoughts so yeah, if you have any other ideas or any other ways you are annotating, I'd really like to know and just maybe get some ideas for myself and I'll see you next time. Um, give this a like, comment, whatever you want to tell me, book recommendations, just any books you've recently read, the way you annotate books, anything, I will listen. Um, write them down below and subscribe if you like to watch more. So yeah. I'll see you next time. Bye. I just give the earth my soul. Hear my thoughts bounce off the walls.